yeah, I'm just going to wait for a few attendees to join in and then we can get going. Oh, you must keep it. Okay, for the people who've already joined in, we're just going to wait for one more minute before we start the webinar. All right. Uh, hello, friends. Welcome to Base Wise. I am Shweta Vandapani. I'm the community builder at Base Wise. You've seen me many times if uh, you're a returning member of the audience. Today, uh, we're going to discuss wastewater management with Trinidad and Tobago perspective. We have uh, Xian Yang, who's a waste management educator, consultant, and social entrepreneur, who's moderating this discussion. Sean has moderated other discussions for us. Please go to the video panel section of our website and you will see her webinars where she brings perspectives from the Caribbean to all of us uh, who are not from there. Uh, Sean is going to talk to Timothy Augustus, who's a technical officer at the Trinidad and Tobago Solid Waste Management Company Limited. And she's also going to talk to Wayne Williams, executive director at, at Caribbean Water and Wastewater Association. We will take questions from the audience. Please use the Q&A section, drop in your questions. And uh, Sean will pick them up as and when it's relevant to the discussion. Over to you, Sean. Thank you very much, Sita. And hello to everyone. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, well, it's morning here <laughs> in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, so welcome to all of you for joining our discussion, a really important discussion on wastewater management, um, our area of focus is specifically Trinidad and Tobago, but we're going to be touching a little bit um, on, on some Caribbean perspectives as well. Wastewater, in, this is my personal opinion now, has not really received the love and attention that it rightfully deserves. And as such, you know, I wanted to give my colleagues an opportunity to shed some light on you know, some of the challenges, some of the opportunities, um, some recommendations on the way forward for wastewater management in Trinidad and Tobago and by extension, the Caribbean. So without further ado, I would allow my fellow panelists to introduce themselves. So I will start with Mr. Timothy Augusta. So Timothy, you can let people know what you do and where, where you are coming from. Go ahead, Timothy. Hi, good morning, Timothy Augustus here, um, Senior Technical Officer, Trinidad and Tobago Solid Waste Management Company Limited. And uh, my role here as a Senior Technical Officer is to assess, uh, make recommendations for wastewater treatment systems, uh, especially for the government uh, institutions. Uh, I have some, in terms of my background and experience, I would have started out way back in 2003 and uh, just doing basic maintenance and then formally taking a formal training and certification from 2006 onwards. Um, also a member of the Caribbean Water and Wastewater Association and an active member in the national section of that association. So, you know, on, on a number of um, wastewater treatment systems, that I would have uh, overseen in terms of operation and maintenance. Uh, there's very little new systems that I would have um, not encountered, but anything that I would have encountered that was new to me, I would have done some research into it. And basically, they usually have very, very similar operations, whether small or large. So that's my background in wastewater. Thank you very much, uh, Timothy. I was actually going to ask you some of those questions, but you answered it ahead of time, but that's okay. Um, and Mr. Wayne Williams. So Wayne, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. I'm glad to be here. Wayne Williams, uh, as Sean said, exec currently I'm the executive director of the Caribbean Water and Wastewater Association, uh, CWA. Um, over 35 years since graduation, over the years since graduating as an environmental engineer back in the day. Uh, my first job coming out was at the Water and Sewage Authority of Trinidad and Tobago, WASA, in the newly formed wastewater section. And I've been a wastewater lover since then. 
um, been back and forth, uh, worked in the States, worked uh, back in Trinidad. Uh, I, I myself and another colleague encouraged Timothy to to get some of the training that he talked about. So he's one of our greatest disciples <laughs> in the wastewater world. I'm, I'm a past president of CWA Bay. I'm a past um, regional manager for wastewater at the, at the water utility. And um, just glad to be here to talk wastewater. I'm always ready to talk wastewater. Thank you very much, Wayne. Um, and I should, I forgot to add too that I'm also a member of the Caribbean Water and Wastewater Association right. and National Section Chair for Trinidad. <laughs> I don't talk about myself too much, you know. So, no, no, no. Um, you're doing well, yeah, you're doing well. <laughs> really happy to be a part of it. So, one of the questions I wanted to ask you guys before we jump into the nitty gritty of the discussion, and Wayne, as you have the floor. Um, and yes, guys, please feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat and let us know where you are tuning in from. It's always amazing to know where people are joining us from. So when you were saying that, um, you know, you have your over 35 years, why waste water for you? Why was this the draw as opposed to anything else you could have chosen to do? Well, <clears throat> excuse me, I did an environmental degree, which is all the pollutions, water treatment, wastewater treatment, air pollution, all those things. What fascinated me and continues to fascinate me about wastewater, as opposed to just water, if you were to just look at two of those. Um, wastewater is living and, and you, have to in, you have to maintain your, your, your biology. When you do water treatment, basically you're just filtering out everything, zapping everything, killing everything, and, and, and hoping that there's nothing in there, and, and just send it on its way. With wastewater, you actually have to use the bacteria and the, and the organisms that come out of your body with the wastewater that leaves your body, <laughs> and you just give it its an ideal conditions. Um, when I'm lecturing, because I also lecture at UV part-time on design, um, I, I call it a big fish tank. So a wastewater treatment plant at certain aspects of it um, is a big fish tank that you have to you have to give the organisms everything that they need to flourish and when you give them that they do the work for you and then you just adjust them move them around you know do things with them but you don't really add too much and in the caribbean because the temperature is so great basically we just add in oxygen <laughs> because uh, for the most part the oxygen loving bacteria the ones that we use most of the time we do use the anaerobic ones as well but um so we you you just give them what they need and they do the work for you and, and, I, and I love that aspect of of that that um you are working together to make it happen all right wonderful timothy same question why waste water for you of all the of all the <laughs> areas and environment well, you could have chosen? Why this, waste this, this was not one of my, this was not my first love at, at all. Um, I was into the uh, plumbing aspect of of maintenance on the wastewater treatment systems, and uh, one day I was working on a plant, and a, a public health officer decided to ask me how does the plant operate, and I couldn't answer. And I said, Well, with I I'm working on this thing, and I'm fixing, and I'm doing repairs but I, I don't understand the process. And when I, I got into it in, in, in 2006, and um, again, later on encouraged by Mr. Wayne Williams and Mr. Mr. Owen Gill and many others, um, it was just a love. And what amazed me is that the, we have to start looking at wastewater as, as a resource. And we have to start looking at wastewater as uh, as ourselves in, in wastewater treatment, whether we are operators or managers, as protectors of the environment. And when we see the kind of quality of water coming out, if we if the plant is operating properly, it actually recharges the, 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 the receiving waters because you're going out there with less TSS, dissolved oxygen at, at good levels. So you're actually recharging and, and, and preventing die off of, of fishes and, and, and other aquatic animals and so on. And it also would, I mean, there's no new water. So it's also helped in uh, actually replenishing things like the, the, let's say the aquifers, let's say the uh, uh, reserves and so on, because there is no new water. And many people are very, you know, it's not a sexy subject. So it's kind of like, 
it's a hands off. Oh gosh, waste water. Well, you, you flush your toilet and you don't look back. But in in mm. I am in the industry and it's a love for me to understand the process that brings dirty water clean before we, we um releasing it into the environment. That's amazing, and I think as 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 um. As human beings, I, I don't think we, we quite understand, as you say, we flush our toilets and it's, you know, it's out of sight, out of mind, you know, S-I-G-H-T. Um, but as you talk about that, and I want to bring Wayne here into the discussion as well too. So Wayne, one of the things that I got from what Timothy was just talking about was roles as well too. We as the general public have a role, the government has a role, um, and there may be other players, wastewater plant operators, you know, the Water and Sewerage Authority has a role. How do you see, you know, everybody's role and what is the importance for, uh, for us all to understand our, our own roles and how it plays into the overall picture of wastewater management? That's a great question. Um, many different ways to answer that um, this morning what i will say is that we should work backwards and what i mean okay. by that is a wastewater treatment plant is designed for a certain flow and a certain strength because you have to you have to have a design specification so you know you, you have a treatment plant that is designed to treat domestic quality waste which would usually be less strong than commercial or industrial waste so if you were to design it for a, and a certain volume as well, you have to decide on a certain volume. And that includes, and the design would include um, rainwater getting in the system just because it does sometimes. So it's not, a, it's not usually a tight system. So when you start with that, when you work backwards, you, you, you have to make sure that the flow does not exceed your maximum design flow. The strength does not ex exceed your maximum str uh, design strength. Otherwise, the plant won't be as efficient as you've designed it to be. So if, if you were to design a plant to just to pick the math to make it easy, to, to reduce 90%, and you put 100 there, great, you'll end up with 10 coming out the back end. But if you put 500 there, you know, it is still does in 90%, you'll get more than 10 coming out the back end because the plant just treats 90%. And, and sometimes when it's overwhelmed, it even goes even lower than that. So as you go backwards now, you have to tell yourself, all right, well, what could affect that? Well, what could affect that is people connecting their downspouts for their roof guttering to the sewer system, because maybe the, the drainage around there isn't great, or they just don't want it in the yard, they just connect it to the sewers. And so now you end up with this dilute water, which has no biology in it, just um, diluting the strength of your waste, and which is, which is okay in terms of dilution, but not in terms of the volume um, that you have to treat. You have people that throw grease down at the sewers. You, there's a certain amount of FOG, fats, oil, and grease called fog that you anticipate in a treatment plant, but not when a restaurant empties their pots down the sink. Not when you have maybe in a, in a, in a housing development where you have a, a smaller plant and you have someone who's doing catering, um, you could always tell where the caterers are because that's where the grease chokes up the sewer lines because once the grease cools, it, it hardens. And we've taken out buckets and buckets and buckets. I have some photos, like I would say, I'll share one day of, of what they took out of a manhole down, downstream of a chicken restaurant. You know, it's just uh, unbelievable. So the rules are that we don't, connect illegally to the sewer systems, that we don't throw things that are non-biodegradable because going right back into your own toilet, you know, your toilet is designed for human waste and some paper that dissolves. It's not designed for wet wipes that don't dissolve. It's not designed for feminine products that don't dissolve. It's not designed for prophylactics which don't dissolve. It's not designed for those things. Those things just last forever. They end up clogging somewhere or tying up equipment at the treatment plant. And we've had pumps that burn out from some of the things that people have thrown down the sewers. You know, we have an area in Trinidad that floods. And one of the things they do to ease the flooding is to open a sewer manhole. <laughs> the water goes away and, and, and they're, they're relieved, which I'm happy for, except 
that everything that was on the surface, all the plastic bottles and everything that was around it gets washed down like a drain and ends up at the, at the treatment plant for trouble for the operators. So um, we need to treat the system right. And it, and it works just like your, low, your home system where if you uh, have a septic tank and soak away, it works correctly if you don't abuse it. And the same thing for the, for the mechanical plants. Okay, thank you, Wayne. And one of the things that um, for our audience as well too, so we do still have septic tank soak away systems. Um, but one of the things that was coming out, out of what Wayne is saying is that there's still a lot more education that needs to happen around people's disposal of things that shouldn't necessarily be flushed down the toilet. We still have a lot of that because that poses a problem for Wayne and Timothy and other, you know, other operators out there. I remember a, a particular operator, literally, if he wasn't on his hands and knees, begging people to stop putting wipes down the toilet. You know, um, he's like, it's not flushable. Please stop. <laughs> you know, so we, we have a lot of education that needs to happen. But in terms, of, in terms of people understanding what should go down the toilet and what's only designed to be disposed of in terms of your toilet system, because we do have urban and rural parts of Trinidad and Tobago. There are people who do not have um, the right sewage systems, and there are those who do. So we need you know, really to, to be able to capture that. So there is a question, and I'm going to pose this one to Timothy, about how and where is the, is the sewage sludge disposed of? So the sludge that comes out of the plant, how is that disposed of? Uh, Timothy, that's for you. Thank you. All right, um, there are several ways, but um, basically there are treatment plants with digesters, whether aerobic or anaerobic digester, um, digesters. And uh, they would continue to break down the, the biomass, the sludge. And once it is properly well stabilized, that sludge could be released onto a drying bed, a bell press, and be completely dried and, and used as a resource back into the, let's say into agriculture. Um, you can pellet it, you can use it for, um, mix it with uh, what you call cover material for land filling and so on. Um, so, you know, once you're looking at it as a resource, uh, you can find ways to, to deal with it. But that's the basic um, treatment for, for sludge coming out of a, a wastewater plant instead of which I've seen, some people would have just poured the sludge down the river. And the purpose of the treatment plant is to retain the solids and let's let the water go out. So you need to do some land application, some digestion. In, in an anaerobic digestion, you can actually get uh, enough methane and so on and, and, and use back that, that gas to, to power things. So, you know, we have to look at it in a, in a you know, a more resource type way. Okay, and and I 100% agreed. I think for for all of them, for water, for wastewater, for waste, um, it, they are all resources. And as such, we need to start paying attention to them in that way and to start recognizing that they're valuable and that they have other purposes um, that can be utilized as well. So. On that note as well, to win, one of the things that I am, uh, I guess I would use the word advocate for now, is innovation, not necessarily invention, right? How can we take an existing system and make it better? How can we innovate? So do you see any areas for innovation um, in the wastewater sector? And you can give some examples as well, too. Sure. Um, just to key off, I'll key off of what Timothy was sharing <clears throat> in sure. terms of the, of, of the biogas uh, as a regional example, just to take it regionally um, a bit. One of the prisons in the region, I won't say where, in Grenada, uh, one of the prisons in the region, um, um, they realized that, they, and, and there's, a, there's a YouTube video on it, very fascinating uh, YouTube video on, on that. Um, th their food bill, they realized their food bill was the biggest expense. So you, you, you have a building full of free labor um, and you let's get into some farming and, some, and raising some animals, husbandry. 
And so what they did was they captured, they put in a biogas system where they captured the waste from the animals. You know, they just hose down the pens into this um, tank. And the gas that comes off, the methane is one of the gases that comes off. They use it to, um, in their cooking, um, boiling water to, 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 for, to remove feathers from chickens and all that. So they reuse the gas um, there. So that reduces the electricity bill. Or, or if they were to bring in gas, their the gas bill. And, and they reduce their chemical fertilizer purchase down to zero. Zero. And and what they have is is the um the the the, the green fertilizer that they're getting from their own animals and and the, and and the cuttings that they throw away and etc. So they were able to make that a sustainable system. Right. Um, th there are simple things that one can start with. Uh, and most of the Caribbean are interested in reducing the electricity bill because other than Trinidad that has oil. The electricity bills uh, going up the island, the cost of electricity is high. And so people have been using, you, the first thing we talk about are VFDs, variable variable frequency drives. You, when, a, when a motor is turned on, it just, it just operates at full speed. If you just turn it on, it operates at full speed. You turn on your vacuum cleaner, it's on. Whatever it's gonna be on, it's on. So pumps are just on at full speed. Well, what these, pump, what these drives do that you can add to the, to, to the um, panel of, of, the, of the pumps is to be able to slow down and speed up the pumps. So now if the flow is slow, the pump can slow down. And so therefore you're not using as much electricity and, and, it, and it will ramp up and down re as required. People are using what they're calling, I'll use the, the term PV, photovoltaic systems. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, that, is the, that, that technology has in, in improved tremendously over the years because there's a need, you know, once there's a need, people throw money at it and, and, make, and, and do it. So, you know, you, you're starting to see more and more being used um, pumps that operate on solar energy. You could operate your security lighting. You see that everywhere, you know, people street lights and all that now are doing that. Well, the lighting on the compound can be solar yeah. um, through the PVs. You, you have green sustainable solutions, you know, that we talked about with the biogas. You have, you have sludge that you're collecting. So what can you do with it? Well, you can dry it and use it as a fertilizer. You can put it in a, a biogas system and let it produce gas. You can use, an, 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 as in Timothy say, anaerobic digestion. Um, you know, so one of the other things too is sometimes the new tech is really old tech. So what is coming back in 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 into fashion are the green sustainable nature based solutions. So right. instead of trying to go through a fully mechanical plant, um, especially for smaller systems, let's say the, the, the difficult systems are like an apartment building or a hotel or a police station or, or a health center where you have more people than you should really put on a septic tank system if there's no central system in the area and you have to do an on lot one. Those are the difficult ones. Uh, and so you just bring in like mini package plants, mini treatment plants. And, and uh, you know, those, those require almost as much tech as, as a big plant just on a smaller scale. But if you could use some green solutions, you know, pass it through a septic tank to remove the solids um, remove and treat the solids and the liquid that comes out the back end, maybe you run it through a plant bed. You know, plants, it's, it's liquid fertilizer coming out. It has the nitrogen in it, the phosphorus in it, ammonia, all those things that plants want. You run that through the plant bed. And then, and, and what we discovered, um, you know, is that you can use good looking plants. You know, most of the plant beds have been reed beds and these grasses and it's like, okay, it looks like a bunch of bush in a corner. But now, you know, through a study, one of our buddies, uh, and I was telling Alphonsus Daniel in Grenada, they did they, they, the, um, Hawaiian torches, um, certain types of lilies, certain types of heliconias, you know, plant that would actually make money selling them. Um, they loved it. They loved it. And they grew it. And then, you know, it's better looking. And so you, you're able to treat the water. Either they will use all the water, depending on how much is coming out, or they will treat the water to such a good um level that it can be released back to the environment. Um, so as I said, and there are no moving parts, <laughs> nothing to maintain per se. I mean, there'll be a little bit eventually, but basically you're just trimming the plants, picking the flowers, um, taking out some weeds, you know, but it's, it's, 
it's it's as I said, low tech has come back um, because of the green nature of and and there are different versions of that. I just gave a little one, but there are different versions of 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 running wastewater through some natural systems. Um, right. The natural systems will benefit, and and you will benefit as well. Very symbiotic. Yeah, and one of the in a in a recent uh, conversation. That I was having with a colleague, you know, he talked about um, ecosystem adaptation and the use of nature-based solutions. Um, it hasn't really been getting. I've seen it done. I mean, I've traveled. I remember when I was at um, Cornell in the U.S., there were living shorelines. I was absolutely fascinated um, by that. When I saw it, I was like, "So you could use the plants?" And they're like, "Yeah." You know, it was absolutely fascinating at that time. Um, but it really draw us to, to kind of start paying attention. Nature itself gives us solutions. And if we as human beings can start to uh, mimic those solutions, you know, I think we would be better off, especially as small island developing states with, you know, land um, being an issue, land availability being an issue, you know, we can start looking more, you know, of the, at those kinds of solutions versus concretizing. You know, we like yeah. concrete, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Versus concretizing everything. Nature itself provides the solution. Uh, so uh, there is another question from which, Anna Sean. Sean before you go on, if I may, uh, sorry. Yes. One of the things that part of the reasons for that is that the the treatment plants are easily sold, easily specified, easily sold. And installed, and you know, there's money in it. And and so what you have to have is that the, the, the folks that have the money have to decide what they want, as opposed to just right. abdicating it to a contractor who will just bring something in. And 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 you know, we've been plagued with that in, in those in the in our boom years when people would bring things from all over the world, have no spare parts, instructions in a foreign language. Timothy is laughing because he's seen it, and all those kinds of things. So so you know, you have to put in your specifications now the, the, of what you want, that you want a nature-based system, as opposed to just, I need a treatment plant to handle 100, you know, 100 houses. And yeah, they'll bring you something. Sure they will, but it, it won't be, it'll be fully mechanical because that's the easiest thing to sell and to set up okay. and to get in and get out. Um, so it, it has to be put on the part of the decision makers, the policy makers, the folks who write the specifications, Etc. to to insist in in certain of those aspects, not just saying all bulbs shall be LED. You know that's okay, great, that's easy, that's a line in in, in an spec. But you now have to look at something maybe at the back end of the treatment plot um, to see one perhaps how you can minimize it first of all, because that's one of the the R's right to reduce, and mm -hmm. and um, and then see what you have what you have left to treat with. Sorry. Oh, you're saying. No, no problem. Yes. So, and, and that's that's an excellent point, Wayne. You know, it ha we have to we have to be specific in our requests. So even if it is it is it's coming from another part of the world, you know, we we are best suited to determine the best solutions for ourselves, and yeah. not just take you know something from somewhere because, as you say, if it, it's a money thing, it's business. They will just sell you whatever they whatever plant or whatever you know. So I find myself sometimes. Um, a lot of those requests come to me and I'm like, I don't necessarily want another plant kind of thing. You know, I am looking for a solution that can utilize all of these things that can match nature as much as possible. So that is my request, you know, so there are others that need to, you know, to have a similar sort of thing. Um, and as I have you on the floor, a very quick question from the audience. How much of our, how much of our system is seward which basically they're asking how much of this island is linked up to the main wastewater system and then timothy okay. i'm coming across to you okay so the current statistic is um that that um 20 percent of the island is on centralized sewage systems um that were i guess operated and maintained by wasa um, 10 percent are from the uh, package plants uh, else otherwise so if you were if you were doing a housing development that's not close to a waster system you would have to install your own treatment plant and so okay. and that's part of the challenge is that it is it, you know private companies will build it um, you know government housing will build theirs as well because you know you, you can't put 400 500 3,000 houses in the city <laughs> you have to put it where there's land and where there's land there's no system 
So right now, the number that's being used is about 30% of the country is, is, is using uh, centralized sewage systems and the rest of the country use septic tank and soak aways. Um, and also pit latrines. And of course, there's still open defecation, but at a very small level. Um, but not, and not to, to discount septic tanks and soakaways. They still work and they work well uh, once they're treated properly. It is a valid way of treatment. Um, the challenge only is that if you have an aquifer that you're pulling water from, um, you know, the, what soaks in the ground has ammonia and some other things in it, which is not usually a problem, but if it gets into a water system, then the treatment plant folks have some extra work, to, may have some extra work to do, depending. So, but other than that, um, you know, the coverage in Trinidad is 90 something percent in terms of proper wastewater um, treatment. Uh, which includes septic tanks and so away. I have one in my home because I have where I'm live is is past the end of the water system, so I you know everybody around here has one um, and it works fine. Okay, excellent. That's that's good information to know because I didn't know how much of the country as well is on. Um, so it's a combination of being attached to the main systems, separate package plans. Okay, good. That's yes. that's because I I too didn't know that. So Timothy, yeah. um, my questions to you in terms of, you know, having the experience as an operator and, you know, understanding the challenges that we have, what, are, what, what do you see as some of the main challenges we have from an operator's perspective? Um, and would you have any solutions as well from, from your experience, what you've seen, heard, interacted with, you know, what are the challenges and what are some of the solutions that you see that we can if we're not developing them already, that we can start to implement? Yes, very, very good question. Um, we have a, a number of challenges as operators, um, one being the type of material coming in along with the wastewater, which uh, you know was mentioned previously in terms of the so-called flushable wipes and so on, um, and even pieces of plastics. And you know it just ends up in the pumps. Um, if there's insufficient screening. Um, the other thing is sometimes we we do install things like grinder and shredder pumps and we end up with the same issues. They tend to get, um, the blades get dull and then they, they can no longer perform that duty. So it's that's a, a real sore spot for operators. And uh, in terms of the, the challenges, in terms of maintenance, many of the operators and the maintenance crew would like to have all the equipment working and so on, but the challenge is when one goes down, it takes months, especially with state companies, to to get, um, you know, from procurement to actually getting the, the 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 item and then reinstalling it. It's months in some cases, right? So that leaves the plant operating and and limping, um, limping along on one piece of equipment which your brain does not fail <laughs> because then you will have a, a, another issue maybe back up into the homes and so on of, of residents so it's, it's a challenge in that aspect um what we can do to to deal with some of these things um we have to have the persons with the authority and the money to understand you know, it's, it's like begging them to understand that we have to get resources. You cannot build a treatment plant without thinking that in the future, these things will go bad. Just like a vehicle has to be maintained in some cases every 5,000 kilometers, blowers, pumps have to be serviced after every few hours of run time. And that will be, of course, available on the operations manual of each piece of equipment. So whatever piece of equipment it is, there's a timeline. And when you put these plans in place to, to do the, the maintenance schedule, the preventative maintenance schedule ends up as breakdown maintenance because there's no parts. So right. again, we, if you can get uh, stakeholders to understand uh, beforehand that you know we need to have spares stored and, and you know people sign for them so that there's no you know no issues there um we would do a, a, a better operation and of course public mm -hmm. education to the 
uh, you know, initiatives were done in the past in 2016 and so on by, by the Water and Sewage Authority in terms of public education in the schools, number one, because children have a way of when they get excited about something, they go home and tell mommy, mommy, you know, you can't put that down the toilet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, things like that would help in the public understanding that, um, you know, there are people down the road who have their pumps and so on to maintain and we're going to destroy it. So things like that. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, and, and I appreciate that because I do feel sometimes that we tend to be quite reactive rather than proactive. And as such, we don't, you know, we wait until the very, very end uh, to put things in place, which poses a problem for people like yourself who are operating with the plants and have, as you say, having to wait long periods of time, very frustratingly so, I am sure, um, to really get the plants up and running. So it's to understand, you know, understanding the importance of preventative maintenance versus breakdown maintenance understanding that there needs to be a system set up in place to have spare parts and stuff available so that you are you now can say okay right the shredder pump break okay broke down let me go you know let me go to the storage room and get another one i mean i used to manage a tilapia facility and that was one of the things that i really you know spoke to my my zen boss very early on about i do not want so when the pumps break down, which, which happened, I had a huge fish kill. I lost over, I was up to my neck in dead fish. That's just to tell you all how much fish. And I had eight 20 feet by 10 feet by five feet deep tanks. And the electricity went during the night. There was nobody there to turn on the pumps manually. And I lost fish, right? Um, so having that lesson as well too, because tilapia production was new to me. Um, I put measures in place to have to deal with that. Uh, Wayne, you wanted to add something? I did. Um, one of the biggest, it may be arguably the largest challenge we have in wastewater is the low tariffs. The tariffs mm. are ridiculously low. And I give an example. We complain about the water rate in Trinidad and Tobago. The water tariff is about 19, 20 years old, if not longer. So they haven't had an increase in that. And the wastewater rate is about 50% of the water rate. So it's, it's a 50% of a low water rate approximately. Now, in other countries where it's done right, um, because of the sizing, um, usually the wastewater rate is two, three, four, up to five times more than the water rate because of the cost of, to, to treat in, in terms of the volumes, et cetera. So if you don't have money to use, if you don't have money, period, you're not going to get money for spares. You're not going to get money for up proper operations. You're not going to get money. Um, you know, like in Trinidad and Tobago, WASA, you know, it has been discussed that WASA is to take over the, the, the treatment plants that other people build. Because if you build up, if you have a housing development and you have to build a treatment plant to, to facilitate the wastewater treatment of the housing, when you sell the last house, the developer has no income coming in. So why would so he's like, well, why would I run a treatment plant? That's not my expertise. You're supposed to take it over. So there have been discussions and arguments and debates about all of this. Um, and I won't go into that. But what I will say is that the reluctance on anybody to operate any plant is because it costs it costs too much. It's a losing. It's guaranteed to lose. And that is even without putting security on it. So the, 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 the tariffs have to go up. And, and on top of that, the as Trini, um, Timothy intimated, training. A lot of the folks that work in the, in, this, in the area are not properly trained. You know, it is called operations and maintenance. Most of it is just maintenance. Fix the pump, fix the, put a new bulb in, whatever. Now, the good news is, is that if, you, if the equipment is all running, functioning properly, then it probably is operating properly, but not always so. So you have to have the skill to, to walk into a treatment plant and look and say, all right, you need, to, you need to increase the amount of oxygen or you need to decrease the amount of oxygen. The plant is actually getting too much oxygen and you have all this foam and blah, 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 blah. So there is some operations aspect to it. But maintenance, of course, is heavily on, on the funding that is required um, to be able to purchase and to do those things and to keep stores and, and et cetera. So 
Um, I've been I've been telling it for years. You need to raise the sewer rate. I know there's a big political discussion about water rates. It's it's all made. folks go and this is regionally. And this is just Trinidad regionally. And the other thing is if you have specifications or you don't have specifications. A lot of the islands um, in the Caribbean have been traditionally septic tank and soak away islands. You know, you have good soil, you know, Antigua, they don't even have a river in Antigua, it's so porous. You know, Barbados, as we know, is very porous, which is of course leading to, to, to contamination of the aquifers. Um, but now that package treatment plants are, because, are in vogue and, and are available and are, and are cost effective, Traditionally, it was only like the hotels would purchase one and then you, the hotel would be left to operate and maintain their plan. And, you know, they may not hire anybody that knows anything about it and they just do the best they can do. Um, but now that other places, now that the wastewater is beginning to be understood a little bit more, you will have hospitals and, 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 and some of those bigger stadiums, you know, you're rebuilding your, 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 your football or cricket stadium. You can't have that on a septic tank in a soak away. You can't, it's too many people. Although I've seen it and it doesn't work, but they put it, um, you now have to have legislature to do that. And many of the islands don't have the legislature. Some of the islands don't even have a department to deal with wastewater because you know, septic tank and soak away, it's a, it's a homeowner's responsibility, not a government's responsibility. It's your tank, you deal with it. So now mm -hmm. that these other plants are coming in, I mean, I went to, when we at our, one of our annual conferences, um, I, I drove around with one of the, the, the wastewater guys. He wanted some advice, and I was happy to see what they had. So it was a win-win. And, you know, we, we went to see about three, four, five package plants, and I was able to, you know, guide him on what should be done next. But there isn't a department. It's just a guy in the Ministry of Health that has a love for wastewater. He sees it as a problem. He doesn't know. He's like Timothy. I, I remember when, when we met Timothy. Timothy said, I don't know how this thing runs. And so myself and Mr. Gill, yes. Um, told him get some training and he did and now he's look where he is now <laughs> so we need more of that to happen we need more yeah. of that to happen so people can understand you know because those innovative systems that i was telling you about the the, the, the nature-based ones you have to have proper calculations for them to work it's quite right. easy just to say listen we need a treatment plant to, to treat 100,000 gallons a day no problem i'll take out the 100,000 gallon one off the shelf we'll send it to you we'll install it you you don't have any calculations to do. I've done all the calculations already. But, but when you start doing the nature-based ones, somebody has to do the calculations. Somebody has to understand what square footage you need to treat. So, and it takes a little bit more knowledge, training, and experience to be able to do that. So, but it's available. So CWBA, we're gonna help as part of our training um, foundation we just founded. Um, we're going to be getting more into that and, and be able to, to train those folks in, in especially wastewater and solid waste is tremendous lack of training in the region and that. And so those are one of the areas that we'll be focusing on. Thanks. Right. And one of the things too, for me, Wayne, with training, because I am, I am really, really interested in um, providing training. So I know we will, we will continue those conversations thereafter, specifically in solid waste. Um, but one of the, one of the things as well too, that, I, I remember I, I got featured for Luke TT for being a woman in waste management, right? But mm -hmm. one of the things that I was telling the interviewer was that we tend to focus a lot on the traditional career paths. So the doctor, the lawyer, the engineer, the teacher, the, but things are specialized fields like solid waste, and wastewater, and water, and renewable energy doesn't really get the draw in terms of young people seeing that this is a viable uh, profession that they can enter into. I mean, Timothy started as a plumber who, you know, grew and got the training and elevated himself and became, you know, um, is now a senior technical officer. But young people don't know that this is a space that you can get into. So I think we need, there's a lot more work to be done there yeah. in terms of the career days, even at the university, at the university yeah. level. I did one wastewater course in, in my master's in environmental engineering. I did a basic wastewater plant operator course with Mr. Gill, right? So I took the initiative 
to and and of course my then boss really pushed us to do it as well too <laughs> right because that was something that the department was getting into at the time so he wanted as many of us to be trained as possible but it really requires an, a, a level of openness open-mindedness to the different kinds of careers so we also have ed asking a question about he wanted to find out um, what is a good example of an on-site wastewater treatment system at a hospital in the West Indies? Wayne or Timothy, either one of you, could, do you have any ideas of a good one in a hospital? Well, a hospital will require the, their own treatment plan. Um, if it is not, of course, close to a public system. If it's close to a public system, you, you just connect. Um, what you would maybe look at in the public system is that whether or not the, the pipes in the road have the capacity to treat something that perhaps was an empty lot or a, a flat building and now becomes a multi-story hospital. So the piping may have to increase in size. Um, in terms of an on-lot system, I mean, you're saying on-lot. When you say on-lot, it means that you are going to treat it on-lot um, and just dispose of it on-lot. So I, I think what he understands is, is, is that it's difficult to have a solely on lot system. You can have your own treatment plant because of the size of the hospital. Um, and and there, there are several types you know, available. I mean, he, we, we can, he can talk to us offline and, and there's different brands, but there are a lot of good brands. There are a lot of big companies that have well-respected brands and treatment plants. You, you just have to find what you're looking for because there's so many different technologies now. Um, and it depends on how, how, how much treatment you require, because where you discharge is important. If you're discharging to an environmentally sensitive area, the standards are much stricter than if you're yeah. discharging to one that is not. So inland surface water or by the sea, you know, they have different standards. So it's, it's important to understand, you know, what you're treating and where you're sending it to. And, and that helps both, both sides of the treatment plant are important, what's coming in and where it goes out. And then you'll know what fits in the middle. Um, the, the ones where you would maybe not discharge from the property at all, like as, like we talked about the septic tank and soak away, those are traditionally called the on-lot, where everything is done on-lot and it stays on-lot. Um, you would need a lot more land to be able to, to, to be able to, um, deal with the, the wastewater from a hospital and of course of course the size of the hospital is important you know you have mega hospitals and you have smaller ones so um usually you if you don't have a treatment system that's already available that you can tap into that you'd have to bring in a treatment plant and as i said the different types you know they have just in the categories they have a five or six categories of treatment plants which i won't go into now um, but in that, you know, we have different brands of that. Um, so he can, he can, um, you know, communicate with us after and, and Timothy and I, we could help him with, with steering him in the right direction. Okay, awesome, Wayne. So Ed, um, we will be sharing the email address for you after, or actually Sweeter will share it in the chat so that you could reach out to, to Wayne and Timothy to provide assistance. Um, because he was talking about systems in St. Lucia and St. Vincent doesn't have any, yeah. you know, so he's really, he's really um, keen in that area. Um, Timothy, we will, a question for you, and then we will have our closing question because we're coming close to the hour. So Timothy, do you think policy makers are doing enough to ensure that this sector, that the wastewater sector thrives in your opinion? Oh boy, <laughs> touchy subject. Um, no, we have a lot, a lot of work to do. We have too much um, separation between the, the, the authorities. We have WASA on one end dealing with uh, their wastewater systems. Um, they were mandated to take over the, the other systems by the housing development uh, and, and others, but um, Many times that didn't happen because they, they, they can't take a plan that really is not functioning. And you have the EME or Environmental Management Authority having the water pollution rules and, and then just leaving it up to the 
owners of these systems to, to come and register the system. And if they don't register the system, where is the penalty? There are laws in place, but the follow-up in terms of charging and, and, and getting people to, uh, if not register, but even when they register to, to conduct the sampling and analysis of their waste before it leaves uh, into the receiving waters and so on, to have an idea of the performance of the plant. That is not done. So we need to have these agencies either collaborating. Um, you know, I, I, I got a phone call from a, a guy the other day. He told me that um, we want to bring some waste by you. I say, why? Because Wasa is not going to take it. I say, well, if Wasa is not taking it, why do you want to bring it by us? <laughs> so, <laughs> right? So, you know, and, and if they don't find a way to, 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 to discharge of it, they will open a manhole and put it inside of there. So we have to, to collaborate together in terms of the, the EMA, WASA, Swim Call, um, the regional corporations. Don't forget the, the vacuum tanker services offered by the regional corporations and other private operators. Mm -hmm. And again, training and, and, and maybe additional legislation so that people will understand that you, 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 you should be permitted, meaning licensed in a special way to, to own a vacuum tanker, uh, and, and which would say that you would not be pulling um, engine oil and then bringing it to Wasa or Swim Club, right? Uh, that which would, of course, gum up the processes that we have. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very challenging um, situation, but the agencies, have to find a way if there it should be one ministry that they could all pull them together and and start impressing upon people that we need to start registering all systems if we don't have drawings some of them don't have any drawings at all no plans no isometrics we can start to do as built for them and and register them with wasa and with the eme so that they could be monitored because if we don't know that they exist you know, I've seen trees going in, in, in growing in wastewater plants. Trees, actual trees bearing fruits. Right? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, we, we have a serious issue, but we need to get them to, you know, collaborate and, and, and for the betterment of, of, of the environment. Yeah. I know we have a saying, what, what was it? Oh gosh, I'm trying to, while you were talking, I was trying to remember the local saying where, you know, one, one don't know what the next one doing. I forget the local saying. We have a saying with that. Uh, with Trinidad and Tobago, where everybody operates, you know, independently, um, when a collaborative approach is really the best. Wayne, you wanted to add anything there before I give you your, I give you both your final questions? Sure. I think it may be the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. Um, you know, I, I will speak regionally because Timothy gave it the local. Mm -hmm. That it doesn't, it, 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 because of the pressures, or if you forgive the pun, the lack of pressures of water in, in, in different countries, supply of potable water is usually taking up most of the minister and, and the utilities uh, attention. Because if wastewater doesn't give trouble, it's like the little child that doesn't give trouble, they get no attention. And, mm -hmm. But the problem though, it, it is giving trouble. It's giving quiet trouble. And, and so many of the, the, the islands have mega farms, mega farms that are, I think pigs is a huge, a huge um, husbandry item in, in, in these countries. And the rain falls and all the waste wa washes down the hill, gets into a river, gets into the sea. And because it's liquid fertilizer, the grasses will grow in the sea. And sometimes grasses are all right because it helps filter the, the, the sediment from the, but it kills coral. And so much of our coral is being is being made damaged in a major way in all the islands. So, so we've seen in the industry wastewater is the, the region's dirtiest little secret. That it, the, the figures of between sixty and eighty five percent of wastewater is getting to the environment under or or non or untreated, and and that is destroying one of the the the. the values of the Caribbean, which is our beautiful seas and the corals and the fish and everything associated with that. And so we are way behind in terms of making that happen. But as I say, 
out of sight, out of mind, but it's not really out of sight anymore. And and slowly but surely, it's coming into mind. And and the foreign um, the foreign agencies and donors and and those with money are, are, are recognizing that this is really really bad. And, and and you're destroying your own welfare. You're destroying the the, the value that people come to see you for. So, um, you know, it it is yeah. You got to have the legislature. You got to have the political will and 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 the utilities have to have that will as well you know if if you have to focus on water no problem make a section have 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 the wastewater section with a high enough um representation in in your management level so that the manager doesn't have to manage both water and wastewater because if okay. you know because that was since I joined in 19, 19 what, 85, I joined WASA. Um, that was the challenge is that wastewater was always underwater. And so everything was all about water and all the money went there because all the phone calls to the ministers and the prime ministers and the utility heads were about water, not wastewater. And, and so wastewater always lagged behind as a little Cinderella. So um, you have to have representation in the utility at a higher level so that you know the, the, the director or the vice president or whatever can speak at those levels about their needs. Right. And I mean, I, I love training, training, I training. <laughs> training, 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 and more training. Can we say training? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, I mean, I, I really like what you said with Mortis Regions, do you say the secret? Because, you know, not enough, as you said, not enough is, is being done because the focus is on water and the provision of water. Yeah. You know, it, it really doesn't get the attention that it deserves. But you know, there are some synergies um, in terms of what you can do with the treated water that comes out. You know, there are some areas that even to reduce the load on water, because we flush our toilets with portable water. Correct. So Correct. even if we could reduce the load of the use of portable water for things like flushing toilets, for things like, you know, and other examples that um, I'm sure if I sit and think about that, I could come up with some more. Um, then to me, that's a that's a win-win sort of scenario, but we're not, yeah. we don't always make the connections, I think. Um, right. And to really, and, 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 and one of the things you mentioned is that, you know, it needs to have separate management. You can't have the water guy also responsible for the wastewater when, you know, his priority will always be because his phone is ringing off the hook, the emails are coming in about making sure that water is accessible to everyone. So if so, in closing, so I just want to wrap up, Wayne, I just give you the floor if there's as you have it right now. Is there anything else you want to say? And then Timothy, you could get to, to say your final words as well as we wrap up today's session. Thanks, thanks, Sean. Um, there's, there's so much to say, but I, yeah. I, would, I would reduce it to getting training because you know, once you train and you understand the problems and you can speak on it um, more clearly and more vociferously and more emotionally, um, because now you have something to say, because now you know. And the more people that know, the more people that be able to say something. And um, public education is important because the public are doing things that will help damage, or will help damage, imagine that will help damage the treatment plants by flushing the wrong things down the toilet, by doing all those things, by grease and all that. We do need the legislature in, in all the islands. They're not, it's not difficult because some of the islands like Trinidad, as I, as I told them in a couple of meetings, I listen, I could just photocopy three different things off of my laptop and off of things that we have in Trinidad that you could just use it as a starting document in your country. You don't have to yeah. start from scratch. Some of the things you yeah. just need to do is change the names and, and, and to protect the innocent, so to speak, and, and be able to have legislator, have standards. They have countries that have standards. So when you go to a, when you go to, um, see our time is coming there. So you have to have standards, you have to have training, you have to have public education, and you have to have the, just the will to give it the attention it, it, it requires. Yeah, there's a difference between the, just having the will as, as also making sure that you have the ability to make the change. And there's no need to, and what I also took away from what you said, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. 
There are examples, no. existing examples yeah. within our Caribbean region that we can simply just apply to each other. We don't need to take anything from Global North. Um, yeah. We have the examples right here and we yeah. can you know, collaborate with each other where yeah. possible. So Timothy, yeah. your closing words? Yes, um, well, he took uh, some of them uh, in terms of the training and so on. But so I would mention that, of course, we need to have that enforcement of the existing water pollution rules. Uh -huh. um, we need to have refurbishment of grade or replacement of non-functional wastewater treatment plants. Um, we need to also look at inventing, not the word inventing, our own wastewater treatment systems. We have enough people coming out from all our universities, um, whether civil, mechanical, electrical engineers, and so on. Um, that could do this, right? And and probably have these standards by by by. Even even if we have to get it um tested and, and certified by the NSF, things like that could happen. And um, in terms of the operators of these fecal waste systems, we also need to have them regulated and so on. Because that too is wastewater. It's coming from septic tanks. It's called septage, but yes, it is wastewater. Okay, excellent. So in other words, ensure that we, so we talked about training and more training and did we say training and more training? So we need to make sure that, that you know, that happens as well as, you know, paying attention to the existing legislation and ensuring that it is as robust as it needs to be in order to, to be able to regulate in an effective way um, the operators that exist um, to ensure that they, they to ensure that the sector not only survives but thrives. So because I always say, you know, waste waste is sexy to me, but wastewater is sexy too, right? So it it, it also needs um, the time, love, and attention because we're all human beings. It it's coming out of our own bodies yeah. as long as we we have breath in our lungs. So it really requires a level of attention, a level of management, a level of operation um, that we have not really gotten to the place yet, but I am the eternal optimist. So, but we do need more people like Wayne and Timothy and others in the Caribbean region to really have pushed the sector forward. So Wayne and Timothy, I want to thank you all very, very much for joining me today in our discussion about wastewater management in Trinidad and Tobago. I trust that our audience really benefited from hearing, you know, the challenges, hearing the opportunities, hearing your recommendations um, moving forward. Guys, this is not going to be the only wastewater discussion. We will be having another wastewater discussion. So please stay tuned to the Be Waste Wise page for further information on that and other future webinars about solid waste in the Caribbean region. So again, um, gentlemen, thank you so very much. Sweetheart, is there anything you want to say before we tell everybody goodbye? Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Uh, thanks to both the speakers. I think you made uh, you gave us a very insightful uh, discussion today. And thanks to a lot, Sean, for putting this uh, panel together. Uh, I'm pretty sure the audience must have benefited. And just for the sake of the audience, I've dropped both Wayne and Timothy's email IDs on chat so you can write to them if you have any specific questions and this webinar is recorded it is going to go up on youtube as well as the bbs wise website in two weeks time but you should have access to it because you've already registered for it thanks a lot everyone have a good day bye-bye thank you everyone okay. bye thank you bye-bye take care